And they should mostly be me and my colleague, Maria Korndorfer. Hi, Maria. Okay, now, Maria, since I muted everyone. Yeah, uh, I'm, I came back. I just came back. Ah, uh, you're back with us again. So I, I explained to the audience already that you are joining us all the way from Lucerne in Switzerland. Um, now, for those of you uh, who have not yet met Maria, uh, she and I first met in San Francisco when we were both uh, doing a graduate school at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. Uh, that was, what, over 10 years ago now. And so um, uh, in the meanwhile, Maria has moved back to Europe. And can you tell us just a little bit about your uh, life, you know, lately as a professional musician? Well, after studying in various towns, like for instance, in San Francisco, I really moved uh, to Lausanne, Switzerland, like about, I would say six years ago. And um, I went to school here again for like two years to do like post-grad studies. I couldn't keep from going to school. <laughs> and um, Switzerland seems to be a, big, a bit of a trap because I didn't think I would stay here, but now see where I am, I'm still here. I have a wonderful partner and um, he's actually doing all the technical stuff for me, which I'm very thankful for. <laughs> and um, yes, I'm holding a position in the chamber orchestra and play in various orchestra and teach a bit a few students. So that's actually my, my professional life at the moment. That sounds like many of our colleagues, a balance between performing solo, performing with ensembles and also teaching, of course. So can you just tell us, you know, uh, the, the pandemic crisis, you know, it's, it's hit every country, um, you, you know, with at different times in different ways. Um, what has it been like in Switzerland? How, how has your career changed? And, you know, what is, what is life like in Switzerland right now? Well, we have to say, first of all, that for the last couple of weeks, many things actually got uh, loosened up again. So um, now at the moment, we are much more uh, in a different situation than when the pandemic started. Like in February, end of February, we got noticed so it's quite earlier than it was in San Francisco. We got noticed that all bigger concerts and events for more than a thousand people will get like all um, canceled. And just about a week later, they canceled like even all concerts down to like 50 and 30 people. And then just a few days later, it was just only five people. So it yeah. was like in a very short time, we had actually the whole month of, uh march april may now it's even june july august and september that we don't have concerts happening wow. so there was like, the biggest um crazy change and the start we, we thought like oh let's see it's just like march and maybe april but then like it got crazier and crazier and we couldn't actually believe what's happening yeah that's a familiar story i think to all of us um so yeah. we, it, that means that you lost so much work playing in orchestras and performing. But what about your teaching? Has that changed too? Well, in the beginning, it was actually still the same. We were lucky. We were saying like, ah, we can still go to school and just teach. At least we have something to do. But um, let me say, I, I don't really recall the right date, but I think um, in the middle of March, they closed down all schools. And so we had to teach from home uh, with uh, online videos and um, Zoom, for example, Zoom meetings. And since my partner plays the trombone, I think there is like a crazy moment for our neighbors. Oh, <laughs> so you were both teaching at home at the same time? Trombone and yeah. violin lessons. <laughs> exactly. And uh, but I hope you have a good relationship with your neighbors. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she said she had to laugh sometimes because like the talking was mostly very loud. She couldn't hear so much of the playing, but mostly the talking. Obviously, we were like very enthusiastic while teaching online <laughs> lessons. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, well, that's, that's kind of an amazing story. It makes me really thankful that, um, that I don't live downstairs from a trombone teacher. No offense, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. In, in any case, I know that the first part of today's program is a piece for solo violin. And you've told me a little bit about it, but can you just tell me about what this piece you're going to share with us is? 
Well, it's called um, it's called the Passacaglia from Bieber, and it's part sort of part of a cycle of um, sixteen sonatas from Bieber, like the Baroque composer, and um, they are called the Rosary Sonatas mm -hmm. because um, each sonata has a picture uh, in front of them with some one of the mysteries of the Rosary happening, and they are actually 15 sonatas and the Pasakaya is ad was added later to that because it also has a picture with the garden angel. So that's why it's also called the garden angel sonata. What I have to mention is the, the rosary sonatas are very famous for scordatura. They are all in, um, you have to tune, for every sonata you have to tune your violin in different, um, in different notes, not the normal fifth, but actually in different kind of ways. Everyone has, this, has a certain setting, but the Passacaglia is just in G minor, so I don't have to do anything to my violin. Thank God. Um, what I can say to that piece is that um, it consists out of four notes that are descending, and they are also called uh, the Spanish cadence, those four notes. And it's all built up on, on top of, those, of that little motive. Um, yeah, for me, like personally, I could say like this piece plays a lot to my heart. This is because that's why I'm also like, I've chosen it to be played. It's because I feel like you have this lonely phrase in the beginning, like this motive and like a loner, somewhere and then you go through life you meet ups and downs and um yeah many things happen good or bad and sad and ha happy and in the end you're alone but you won't be alone so that's why it's just such a very beautiful ending i'm sure you will notice why i don't want to spoil everything well thank you for that introduction i look forward to hearing it toy thank toy you. So I get started then, right now. Yeah, let's get started. I will turn off my camera and um, and your interview cam, and then uh, that will uh, let a, and then I will spotlight your performance video. Um, great. I hope we enjoy this. This is uh, Bieber's Passacaglia for violin, performed by our own Maria Korndorfer uh, in Lucerne, Switzerland.
Bravo. Oh, wow. That was, that was amazing. Uh, thank, thank you so much for that, Maria. Thank you. Thank you oh, for listening. Thank uh, you. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, I'll just rejoin the conversation for a, just a moment because I know you're about to introduce us to one of your friends and colleagues, uh, Stephanie. Would you, would you go ahead and introduce us to uh, Stephanie? Yes, Stephanie. I was sure she, she comes just quickly to me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she's playing, um, like she's counterparting me. We play now together two pieces for you. Um, to tell, like, to tell you shortly something about her, we met in orchestra, uh, in one of the orchestra I was playing, like, actually, right at the beginning when I came here to Switzerland, I could join that group, and I think in one of the first, um, one of the first projects, I, um, she was my stand partner, and it was sort of like, like at least from my side, it was like love of first sight. <laughs> she's she's nodding. So um, we uh, yes, we um, played like we played happily together and we became friends. And since the pandemic started, we were like, um, well, she. Uh, I have to mention that she lives right across my street, like right across the corner. It's really not far away. So. Um, we thought like with enough distance we should just play and do some duets and um played some duets and also uh, had the chance to play um for retirement homes uh because they were all closing down and no one was allowed to come in and um visit the old people and our idea was to play out front and they could join our concert from the balcony which was actually a pretty fun experience to walk like around the building and play like in all different parts that's nice yes well it's a little bit like our experience today we we're we're enjoying a <laughs> performance from your balcony or almost your balcony <laughs> that's true <laughs> all right well, well so tell me about the the duets that you'll play for us next yes um the first piece we play is from uh, Paul Müller and it's called, uh, I have to get the music first, one second, because I don't want to say something wrong. Uh, it's called Prelude, Air and Fugue. It's a, it has like three movements and um, it's all based on chromatic material. Like it's all playing the whole time with half steps actually. And um, the first movement, like the prelude, of course, <laughs> yeah. it's all, uh, I have to say something to Mr. Müller. M Mr. Müller is a Swiss composer and he died 1993 in Lucerne. So he's actually, like it's not, he's not, hasn't been dead for so long yet. Mm. And, but his piece is actually rather in the Baroque style, like, yeah, or, or at least in, in, very classical um, form. Yeah, of course. Yes. To say something about the three movements, yeah, the prelude is more like about the rhythmical elements. The second movement, the air, is like a sad song. And the second violin has like a marching heartbeat like the whole time. And the third movement is a fugue. And I feel like it's like in the, in the jigs style like a dance actually nice well we are looking forward to this uh i uh, wish you uh bon chance and a good performance thank you very much
Bravo. All right. I know that there is uh, one more uh, offering on the program. Um, and I, I, I have a, an idea of what it is, but not entirely. Do you, do you mind introducing it for us, Maria? Oh, wait, hold on. Let me unmute your iPhone, your interview phone. There we go. I'm very sorry. Now? No, no, no. no. Can you no hear problem. me? Yes. I can perfect. hear you. <laughs> exactly. It's called Ale Brighter, the, our next and last piece on the program, in our program. And it's actually a, a Yiddish folk tune like an arrangement for two violins. And we just figured out um, that the song or the tune is about, we are all brothers and sisters and we can only do it all together, which is like the perfect motto for what's happening right now uh, in the world and especially in America, I think. So that's what it is about, actually. It's just, uh, yeah, it's like a klezmer piece, a dance piece. All right, a klezmer dance. I think it's a wonderful way to end your set. Thank uh you. <laughs>
<laughs> Bravo! Mazel tov. <laughs> Mazel tov, exactly. Oh. How nice. Hey, thank you so much for that. That was really wonderful. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and a special thanks to Stephanie for joining us today. That was a special treat. Um, uh, Maria and Stephanie, uh, any, any final words for our audiences from Switzerland uh, before we, we move on in the program? Um, keep the sun shining and <laughs> you will get through it. It's going to be over soon. And maybe if we are lucky, um, the world won't be right to back to normal like it was before the pandemic, but better. Even better. Those are brave words. Thank you so much. Um, well, uh, thank you again to Maria and to Stephanie. Uh, for the next part of our program, uh, I am going to uh, move uh, our, our geography back to, uh, uh, back to San Francisco. And I just wanted to share a little story with everyone because um, this weekend we've had kind of some well, we've had beautiful weather. It's been sunny, it's been gorgeous, uh, but we've had exceptionally high winds here in San Francisco. And, you know, the winds come over from the Pacific Ocean. It's pretty normal. Often they're foggy. This time they weren't. Uh, but there was some, uh, you know, on, uh, on uh, what was it? It was on, on Friday. On Friday, I discovered or, or I heard something exceptional. Um, you know, I went outside and there was just this, this humming sound, this kind of, um, I don't know how to say it. It was like an enormous uh, pipe organ far in the distance. And, you know, this is when I was in the mar marina neighborhood on the northern edge of the city. And what it turns out is that humming sound, that singing noise was coming from the Golden Gate Bridge. And it happened all day Friday and all day Saturday because of these exceptional high winds. And I thought I'd play a little bit of this for you. This is what the Golden Gate Bridge sounds like right now. So apparently what these sounds are, are, you know, they have replaced some of the railings on the uh, western edge of the bridge and the new railings are, are resonating with the frequency of these high winds and you can hear them from miles away. Take a listen here. And, you know, even in my neighborhood, which is several miles away from the, uh, from the bridge, uh, you can still hear uh, the, 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 the bridge singing to us. So it's kind of an amazing situation. I'm not sure, you know, if people who live nearby are probably already getting tired of it. But um, in any case, I just thought that that's been one of the strange kind of wonders of this weekend, of the high winds and all the beautiful sound of the bridge. Um, so next on the program, uh, we're going to feature my, my friend and colleague, James Jaffe. Uh, James, if you're ready to join us, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, yeah, there's the Hello. Um, You know, normally if, if all of this uh, pandemic crisis hadn't descended upon the world, James and I would right now be preparing to uh, do a little festival appearance and a tour in France. So, um, you know, we're probably thinking about that almost every day. At least I am, James. I'm sure you are, too. Um, <laughs> I dream but, of the cheese, Ian. Oh, the cheese, I know. Think of what we're missing. Um, but in any case, I thought it would be nice to bring James on today's program uh, to, uh, to share a little bit of uh, music with us. Uh, James, do you want to introduce yourself briefly and just tell us a little bit about, you know, life here in the city during the, the pandemic crisis? Yeah, sure. Well, hi, everybody. I'm James. Um, I've played quite a bit with Ian over the past few years. Um, and I live here in San Francisco. Sorry, I'm still kind of all blissed out from that bridge noise. Yeah, it's like <laughs> a... Sure. I feel very... Like a, 
It's like <laughs> meditation music for the whole city, or at least That's half so the good. city. Yeah. Although my friend Ryan said he could hear that all the way from Terravel in the Sunset neighborhood. And that's like at least wow. five miles away. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah. And I was in Berkeley yesterday doing laundry. So I, I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right. We don't need uh, to go into why you have to go to Berkeley to do laundry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, you know, so, um, well, most of my work before all this hit, uh, I'm, I, I'm a chamber music guy. So I really want, uh, my whole thing is putting together projects with other people and performing them. Uh, and then the other side of it is I also do a little bit of chamber music coaching, um, which is uh, helping other people do the same thing. Um, and so that's been an interesting shift is, um, is that because it necessitates people sitting in close quarters in a room uh, that is taking a break right now. Um, I've been interested about what about this time I'll look back and, and think about. And I think um, hindsight being what it is, uh, now that we're in 2020, it's like, uh, uh, I'm gonna be like, wow, there was so much free time. Uh, I got to practice a lot. I got to take a lot of walks around the city um and uh just sort of it's like the little things you know cooking um being outside playing music um and i would just absolutely i think that's really goes in with what maria was already saying which is that uh maybe these moments of introspection that we all are kind of forced into are then going to have some really interesting benefits um as we come out of this thing yeah wow um, well, you, you mentioned that you've been practicing a lot of music, and I know that you've been working on specifically this piece by Benjamin Britten. Um, mm. This is, you know, you know, I think most of us who are familiar with music for solo cello, you know, most of us generally we think first of the music of Bach, you know, and his sure. suites for solo cello. Um, so I'm interested to hear your take on how, you know, Benjamin Britten, who is, you know, one of the great 20th century composers, how he sort of gives us a cello suite that in some ways recognizes the importance of what Bach has done for the cello, uh, but also yeah. gives us a new musical adventure. Yeah, anytime, I, that's great. You know, anytime, um, anytime there's like a, a big um, moment of solo cello music in that way, it pushes everything forward, I would say. So Bach's suites in their own way were, were pretty, um, revolutionary because they sort of showed the capabilities of the instrument. They were, at that time, the cello was still coexisting with the viola da gamba, which was kind of its, its um, they, you know, it's not, it's never, it's never a white and black transition. One didn't come in and knock out the other. These two were living together for a long time. Um, and so those Bach suites, besides being incredible compositions, uh, they, um, they really got you straight into what is the cello and what can it do? Um, and then if you fast forward to Britain and this cello suite, um, it's the same thing in the 20th century. What is the cello and what can it do? Um, and specifically, I think uh, Britain's longstanding relationship with Mstislav Rostropovich um, also has a lot to do with that. Because when you're writing for a great performer like that, um, you know, the guy's sort of like a cello Olympian in a, in a certain way. So um, that again, it comes back to, we just, it just pushes everything forward. So uh, on the pure cello end of what you'll hear me doing in this suite, uh, it's really got, it's got so much, like you could, you could forget any, uh, you know, assigned meaning to it and just be like, wow, he has to play really high, he has to play really low, he has to play fast, he has to play soft, uh, a fugue in three voices, <laughs> you know. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think, I think in the great tradition of cello suites started by Bach, this Britain is, is doing that. It's kind of pushing things forward. So when I, when I looked at this uh, cello suite on the program, I noticed that it has many different movements to it. Um, how long is this piece? And, you know, what is the kind of large scale trajectory that it takes? Yeah. Uh, it's about depending. Depending, it's about twenty minutes, maybe, maybe like, tw <laughs> and another minute, or maybe not. It, it depends right. on what tempo you take, um, and it's really cool as a large scale thing. 
it's a um, variations on, well, it's, it's like theme and variations, except the theme is actually strung together for little Russian folk tunes. Um, and Benjamin brilliantly solves what I consider to be some of the theme and variations problems. Uh, one of which is that in a traditional theme of variations, I kind of feel like the beginning's the best part <laughs> because it's the theme, because it's simple, because it just tells you what it's trying to say. Um, and the way Britain solves that is by putting the theme near the end. So you hear this incredible string of things, um, and then the quote unquote reveal is like an insight. Um, you know, what great insight is ever like, uh, super complicated <laughs> it's right it's always like oh oh this is very interesting so you're saying that we we hear most of the variations on the themes before we actually hear the themes themselves yeah exactly ah uh, that's that's kind of amazing it reminds me of some sort of modern films where the plot is is yeah is not revealed until later you yeah. know um yeah they're like how did we get to this moment and then you watch the whole thing and then it's how you got yeah yeah so would you say, uh, maybe I'm just generalizing here, but would you say that the progression of this piece goes from something more mysterious and chaotic to something that is a little bit more solid and, and more uh, lyrical and melodic at, at, by the end? Sure, you could see it that way, yeah. Um, I, can I can quickly tell you the, the things to expect along the way. And um, yeah, so, like, so it starts in, um, sounds like plain chant, and, and very mi mysterious is a great word, absolutely. Um, then we get a march. Um, and then, and these are all quick. This isn't, this is not taking super long because Britain was so good at those quick takes, like get in there, get a feeling, get out. Um, so then there's a march, um, then there's a song, uh, then there's of all things a bark -a roll You did a really gorgeous bark -a roll last week. Uh, then there's a, a dialogue between like a treble voice and a bass voice. Um, and then there's this fugue I mentioned uh, in three voices. Then there's, I don't even know what to call it. He calls it Fantastico. It just feels like a bunch of surrealist magic tricks or, or a clown show. And, and then uh, happens a, um, of, of all things, a Posicalia. Like I couldn't, <laughs> I could, oh no, sorry. There's a perpetual motion machine. Then there's a, a, a Posicalia. And with it, it just, it was incredible hearing Maria do that, just that, that Posicalia just now. Uh, she it's it's only it's only really like different but she goes um and then this one is oh wow uh, just different by one note i mean who could have um well, thank and, you so much also, this is, you know i i find it so helpful you know because often when we listen to 20th century composers and their style is not always familiar to us you know, it's yeah. kind of hard to know what to grab onto when we listen. And I think yeah. not only not only hearing how this how this music sort of it has a this reverse variation structure, uh, but also hearing how Benjamin Britten is giving us these sort of wild, fantastic variations that are all basically classical traditions. You know, Pasacaglia, yeah. fugue, perpetual yes. motion. Those are all things that go yes. all the way back to Schubert and Mozart. Um, yeah. So I think that's really helpful. It gives us something a little bit grounded to listen to. Yeah. And just on, on that sort of to, to begin moving towards wrapping up this, uh, um, the, I mean, I, I have to go, <laughs> have to go back to Maria again. And she said it better than I could about what the sort of what, again, what to hold on to, or, or you could look at it as what's underneath this really crazy Pasacalia. Um, so You'll you'll hear the thing when it comes the 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 Russian themes. The last of these um, is the Kontakian. That's the Russian hymn for the departed. Okay, so it and it also is the music that sort of bookends the piece. So if we're talking about the hymn for the departed, like we know what we're talking about. Um, and there's in that moment of having of, of sort of something inexorable like a Pasacaglia base or reality or whatever it is forcing us to let go. Um, I think in in that moment is the opportunity uh, to see things how they actually are, um, 
and then to come out of it with some kind of insight or realization. And again, as, as Maria said, it's, it's that we're really not alone at the end. Um, and I think you can hear that in the music too. I think, I think Britain um, puts it in there. And I think um, and ultimately, you know, you can point to all the crazy things about the journey. Um, and then, and then you, you come back to that and, and feel like you sort of, you are different for coming back to the same music. Wow. Well, that is a, that is a great introduction. Um, now, I know you have a little bit of setup to do because James is, James is going to be attempting a new, a new way of, of streaming on Zoom here. Um, but yes. while, while you do that, I'm just going to say a couple things. So are we ready sure. to go, more or less? Yeah, I'll go set it up. Okay, great. Um, while James is getting himself ready, uh, I want to take a moment and just thank all of you for being on the audience here. After James's performance, we'll have some time for question and answer. Um, so once he's done, we'll again, we'll applaud him, you know, we'll say thank you. And then I'll invite everyone back to the stage. You can turn your videos on and we can have some live Q&A time uh, with James. Uh, also, I want to take a moment and just remind you all, you know, the, this program that we are doing is, um, is part of a series that is really dedicated to bringing musicians more gigs and bringing more music to our audiences during this time of crisis. So um, uh, like all of our programs over the past 10 years, these are a pay what you can affair. So I just encourage everyone, if you haven't yet, please go to our website and make a contribution that'll help us support artists like the Musicians Today and the rest of the featured uh, concerts this month. Uh, if you'd like more information, the, uh, the upcoming shows in June, we're gonna do one each weekend. Our next one features a magnificent tenor uh, who lives in Germany, Sam Levine. Um, our old friend Emma Steele, a violinist who lives in Copenhagen. Um, and then later in, in June, the last two weeks of June, we'll switch back to our Saturdays at five time and we'll have two more programs. Um, let's see, I think that's all I'm going to say. So James, if you're ready, I'm gonna turn it over to you so we can hear Benjamin Britten's third suite for solo cello. Okay, um, can you hear me okay through the, through the screen share here? Yes, I am hearing you loud and clear. Perfect. Okay, well, um, uh, thank you, Ian. And uh, just thanks for having us all here. And here comes Benjamin Britten's third suite for cello.
Bravo, James. Take a bow. <laughs> Bravo. Coming back here. Let me, uh, maybe I'll mute the one thing and I'll go back to the other thing. Great. Wow. Well, that was amazing. Now, as we get ourselves resettled, uh, oh, there we are. Hi. I'd like to invite everyone to rejoin the stage. Hi, James. Uh, if, if everyone is interested, I'd like to invite you to uh, start sharing your video again. If you're on a computer, uh, the button is on the lower left. Uh, on a uh, tablet or a phone, I think it's up, up near the top. And uh, then we'll repopulate our grid uh, full of audience faces. Um, let me be the first to say, James, congratulations. What an incredible piece of music. I mean, that must have been an extraordinary challenge, uh, putting that together. Uh, yeah, I'm, um, you know, one of the, it's really cool when you um, are a musician, as you well know, when you, when you come back to a piece after setting it down for a long time, you'll see different things in it. I first learned that, that piece um, when I was a master's student living in Cleveland um, and played it on a recital there. And I have to say, it means much different, it, it has a much different meaning for me now than it did then. I, and uh, I, I think um, the, the challenge is really like, uh, uh, just spending enough time with something until you figure out what it's, ah, oh, monkey. Yeah, monkey, monkey really liked the Benjamin Britten. Um, uh, you should know, James, you should know you have a fan here. Uh, for those of you who haven't met her, this is my cat, Monkey. Um, she's, uh, she's a big music fan. Well, Monkey and I have had quite a few rehearsals together, uh, with Ian too, I think, but. Yeah, she's especially fond of James's uh, cello case. <laughs> yeah. Every, every yeah. time he opens up, takes his cello out of the case and leaves the cello on the living room floor. Uh, it has a cat in it within a few minutes. <laughs> well, let's see. As long as we have our, our wonderful audience with us, does anyone else have any questions for James or for me or for Maria and Stephanie over in Switzerland? We are all here and we are at your service. Uh, you should be able to unmute yourself if you, if you would like to just speak up or you can type something in the chat. Ben, she and I enjoyed it really very much here at Piedmont Gardens. Thank you. Ah, thank you. I see that's that's Gordon, right, over in Oakland. Uh, that was somebody else from Piedmont Gordon Gardens. I'm nearby in Piedmont, but uh, uh, I was going to ask James, are you are you kind of playing this back in your head when you're doing this, or are you reading them? Uh, I'm a I'm a sax player myself, so I'm just trying to uh -huh. imagine. You know, how do you? there's such a, a length of the piece and all of the subtleties it's not just like playing a few keys you know yeah um i i think i did memorize it when i first learned it but i today i was look i was reading off the um I, well i guess i wasn't i don't know it's that's a, that's a good question i don't i don't think i was looking at it the whole time but um i did have the music in front of me and as you say there's so many little details um i think you know it's interesting mem mem memory works a few different ways in performance if you feel good about it then it's 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 great to do but if there's a shadow of a doubt that one of the little notes might not be where you want it it could take you out of it almost and so then it's kind of nice to have a little reminder um wow. so i guess the rule of thumb is whatever makes you and the audience feel more connected and comfortable i think it's amazing it's amazing nice. um, yeah. Uh, James, we had a question on the chat. They asked if you could um, show us and tell us a little bit about your cello. Oh, sure. Uh, this instrument here, uh, it, well, do, do we have any guesses as to how old it might be? Uh, 25. 25, that's a good guess, Ian. <laughs> how about 225? That's much closer, yeah. Oh but no, it, really? <laughs> um, <laughs> it, we, I uh, actually, I, um, I'm asking. I'm a bad lawyer. I'm asking questions I don't know the answer to. 
but it, I do know it was made sometime between um, 1800 and 1850 uh, in London. So an English instrument and um, it's been uh, repaired many times over the years. It's almost like, uh, you could think of it as like an old, uh, oh, the label is of William Forster. And it was probably somebody in his workshop working under that label. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it feels like a, a building, that, a historic building that's just gone on a lot of renovations. And sometimes walking through a historical building, you're like, oh yeah, that was from you know, 1820 and that was from 1870 and this one we just did in 2005, and whatever have you. So um, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, almost, you see different musical eras happening on my cello. So the, the, this, this missing pegs, if anyone was curious about, that's a very relatively new invention that lets my head feel free. Uh, I have this carbon fiber tailpiece on here. Uh, that definitely wouldn't have been happening um, uh, you know, in the 1800s when they made it, but uh, it's designed to sort of open up the acoustics of it um, and, uh, and et cetera. So that's the long answer to your question is that it's a crazy old English cello that's had a lot done to it over the years. Nice. Um, let's see, any other questions from our audience? You can raise your hand or you can speak up. I, uh, I see Jan. Oh, uh, sorry. Is that I Karina? Pig's hat. One hey. more time. I love your hat. Thank you. Ooh. I, I do sorry. this in honor because I don't think Ian would know me if I weren't wearing a hat. <laughs> ah, that must be Peg. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I look forward to doing a concert in person where I can wear a hat and dress up. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I, I took an opportunity to put on a bow tie today. Yes. I thought, I I thought why not? Why yeah, not? We, it's, great. it's working. It's, it's, that bow tie is working. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I saw that, um, I saw Jan Mountjoy had her hand up for a question. Do you want to chime in, Jan? Hi. I'm just wondering how you change pages uh, when you're playing the cello. Ah, I, yeah, Good you're question. using an iPad, right? Right. And uh, and how does the page turning work? This is a question I get a lot too. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 this is on the floor that you can't see while I'm playing. Um, it's a, just a Bluetooth um, page turning pedal. So it's wirelessly connected to iPad. I tap one, this this pedal to go forward, this pedal to go back, um, and I uh, have had to learn a little bit of new behavior for my feet, but probably not as much as Ian because he already has three piano pedals um, in addition to his his Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. Did you have to? Did that? Did you re redo anything with your feet, Ian, when you learned the Bluetooth? Uh, yes, I, I've I've been doing a similar thing lately where I I use an iPad for my sheet music. And yes, I use my left foot to turn pages. And it, it took me a couple of months to really get comfortable with that. Um, just wow. because, I don't know, because so much else is going on when I try to play the piano. Um, wow, but it was yeah, good, yeah. you know, it's important for us to learn new skills and, uh, you know, I figured it out. It's very convenient now. <laughs> There's a different way to raise your hand. Hi. Yes, hi. Hi again. I just wanted to uh, thank Maria and Stephanie for their wonderful performance. That was beautiful. And uh, I've not been to Lucerne uh, except once in the airport, and it was beautiful <laughs> even there. But thank you so much. That was lovely. And James, thanks again for I, the history of your cello is wonderful oh thank you i had a question for maria and and um uh, stephanie also have you guys gotten to play a lot of chamber music or is this is this a rare thing for you if you, you play so well together oh we, we can't hear you maria let's see looks like you're unmuted but oh it's because uh let's see oh the audio thing where you're using your video account. Interesting. Well, you'll have to uh, find a workaround for that. It looks like it's working. It's just not. Uh, oh, yeah. This, still, this is it still connected to your microphone in the other room? 
Mm -hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> it's amazing. We've had so many workarounds while we try to put these concerts together. But and there so is many a little things. To raise your hand. Um, well, there. let's see. Maria, we can't hear you. But if you wanted, you could type a message in the chat, maybe. <laughs> That's too bad. Um, I see Karina has her hand yeah. up. Do you want to? Yeah, uh, I just want to say, James, this was beautiful playing. I mean, you obviously embody that whole piece. And thank you for telling the different uh, sections a little bit. So it was just really going on that journey. I had written it down, which was great. Uh, and you embodied it completely. And so my question would be, how long did you have prepare, to prepare for this? I mean, you knew it from before, but for this yeah. point. Uh, early on, so through the month of April, I sort of did a, a, a set of live streaming programs. And so I had about, uh, since I, la you know, I, I first learned it, as I mentioned, in Cleveland, but then I really only had an intense week of working on it um, th in April. Mm -hmm. And then I put it down again. Um, and then Ian and I were talking about what might work on this program. And then I picked it back up again and worked on it for another, you know, um, I don't know, a week or, or, or five, five days or so. Um, yeah. And yeah, and, and it's like it, uh, but, but having, having um, an idea of the sound in your ear goes so far towards what, what you're saying is kind of all, the goal for all of us is like, how do, you, um, how do you become the thing more so than like trying to give a simulation of the thing? It, it feels mm -hmm. ongoing. Like I think if I did the piece again, I would I would like keep you know keep working on the little bits of it that I want to you know yeah yeah it's beautiful beautiful keep it keep it. <laughs> I remember you when you introduced it. You told us about one section that was that was described by Britain as fantastico, and yeah. I'm sure I could hear the fantastico section when it was yeah. like yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the many things Ian does well is uh, the sort of Pierrot music or the music of Schoenberg. And I thought I thought of that type of world with that because it's um, like a like those those sort of uh, Commedia dell'arte or those like clown inspired performances. They're just always like a, 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 a the, it's like the um, timing is so important in a way like an, another thing happens and you and you're like, huh, <laughs> yeah. what's that? Oh, good. Well, I think we might have Maria back. Are you with us now? <laughs> Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Hey, Andy, hey. before Andy leaves, I wanted to say thanks, Andy. Everyone, everyone, this is Andy, and he's helped us so much put this together. Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, if, it, um, if this crisis hadn't happened, Maria and I would be preparing for a concert this Tuesday. We were scheduled to perform in Lugano, in the, in the mm -hmm. south of Switzerland, in the state of Switzerland called Ticino, the Italian speaking part of the mountains. Uh, Maria and I were scheduled to play a concert. And so um, it, it's kind of sad that we are not able to do that, but this is the best we can do. At least we're together making music, right? Thanks Ian, thanks Ian, that's true. Now I can answer the question, finally. I'm sorry it didn't work before. I don't know what the problem was, but Actually, we haven't been playing together besides in orchestra. And now, yeah, it seems like it works well. So there's more to come. Yeah, so, I hope you keep, I hope you get to keep doing it. For sure. also, and, and, you know, we're all, we all came out of the San Francisco Conservatory and it has such a chamber music tradition and we're all chamber music fans. But that was my first thought when you two started playing together. I was like, huh, like, chamber music itself just kind of has a sound to it. And it was like the way that you started sort of like getting into a phrase the same way, you can't, you, you can't like simulate that. And uh, yeah, so I don't know, but it, it's, 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 it made me thankful because like you don't get to hear quote unquote chamber music sound so much nowadays. Yeah. Well, thanks, James. <laughs> it's really nice to hear. Ian and James, I think you guys need to write a piece that incorporates the songs of the bridge because that that was so cool. I think it would lend itself beautifully to an undercurrent and a piece. Danny Clay, gotta yeah. get on it. Ian's, going, Ian's, Ian's starting an email right now. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I actually already started an email thread about that. <laughs> so great minds think alike. Uh, but hold on, I'll show you exactly what I was thinking. I'll be right back. Uh, okay. It is my pleasure to introduce you to um, one of the instruments in my household. Uh, behind me, you've, you've seen my lovely little Steinway piano, but next to it, I have a little reed organ. This reed organ is powered by uh, foot pedals, which pump the bellows under it. So I keep my feet moving like that. And then when I play on the keyboard, it makes it some tones. <laughs> And so I was thinking that I could probably put together a little duet for Reed Organ and Golden Gate Bridge someday. <laughs> yes. Maybe next time. <laughs> Wonderful, Ian. You want to hear it? Can't wait. It's it's even you know it's even a portable little organ so I could haul it out to the bridge someday for a, a little <laughs> bit of cham chamber music with the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you don't get blown away. Yeah, I know it is crazy. No, it's 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 been really really windy. It's yeah. a little crazy out there. <laughs> uh, I see another question from Jan. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to let you know that. Hearing you, Ian, and the people, the artists that work with you, it makes us feel connected again since we moved from Hay Fork in Trinity County to Santa Cruz. And uh, we're happy to be here, but we miss you. Oh, that's a wonderful sentiment. Yeah, this, this summer, you know, we were supposed to do um, about a dozen concerts all over California. And, you know, the, the Trinity Alps Chamber Music Festival is mostly our summer activities are based, you know, in, in rural Northern California. And so we have no idea what is going to be possible, you know, by July or August. It seems like the world is changing so quickly that it's impossible to make predictions like that. So in the meanwhile, it is, I agree, very heartening that we're able to be able to keep not just keep the music going and keep you know keep our musicians employed for a little longer but but create these kind of community events where people can see each other and hear from each other and um, it just keeps us in touch. Yeah. enjoy it <sighs> well let's see anything anything left before we uh we before we call yeah. it a day and go to our post concert uh party at the at the bar oh wait it's a sunday morning we can't do that <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. cheers. I see, some, I see some Prosecco. That's nice. Here, uh, yeah, it's not Sunday morning anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers, everyone. Thank, thank you all again for joining us. Um, I will be sending out another survey over email about your experience. Um, I know that we still have some have some trouble with the registration system. I'm going to try to totally figure that out this week so that future concerts are much easier and straightforward to register for. Um, it'll help me too because it's kind of a lot of work throughout the week to keep track of that. So in the meanwhile, I wish you all a wonderful Sunday and a very pleasant week. Um, we'll see you again. Uh, and a special thanks to our friends James, Stephanie, and Maria for joining us today. Bravo again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care, my friends. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.